Hi, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Fearless. And I'm going to try something I'm calling Copy That Thursdays. And what I'm trying to do is get a beginner's tutorial going where you can see how someone designed a logo. And I'm going to show you that it's exactly the same whether you do it here in Affinity Photo or if you do it here in Affinity Designer. And really, I'd like you to just get the idea of the technique used. And in the end, it will be a completely vector graphic. And so you can size it, resize it. You can save it as an SVG, or you can save it as an EPS. And then if, you, if people are using Illustrator, they can import them if they want. So let's get started. The first one I'm working on is Domino's. Domino's is a very simple logo and anyone can create it. So it looks like it's on a 45 degree angle. So what I'll first do to make it easier for me is I will hold shift because it snaps. I can snap it to a square, which is what I want. So the first, now that I have it easy to work with, I'm going to go to the rounded rectangle right here. And I'm going to do the first one like this. And I'll get it as close as I can. And that looks about right. But the curve is wrong. And what's great about the shape tool is every tool has things you can change up on top. In this particular rounded rectangle one, we have uh, the corner, one of the corners. So I can have to select it first, of course. So I can go here right up on top. And let's see what we need. It looks like 8%. That looks about right. And so I can take this now. And we want to keep it as a vector. And it's we need to play with it a little. So um, I would say that you need to convert it to curves. It's a good thing to do. And it'll be easier to, when you export it, it'll be more compatible. So. Instead of being a rec rounded rectangle shape like this, I'm going to hit Convert to Curves. And Convert to Curves means it's a truly vector where you can grab all the points and do what you want. I'm going to bounce right over very quickly to Affinity Designer to show you how it's done there. It's exactly the same thing. So most of the time, I'm going to be in Affinity Photo because most of my tutorials are Affinity Photo. But I'm going to show you. Here's your rounded rectangle. And right here is your corner, you go to whatever you need to be, and here's your convert to curves. So it is exactly the same. So we're going to bounce, go back to Affinity Photo, and here we go. So we're going to continue from here. So now that it's a curve, I'm going to duplicate that curve, C Control or Command J. Now we have two, and I'm going to drag that one, and it looks like they made them exactly the same, which is great. Let's take the top one. And lower, let me move this actually to the top one so I know. I'll even write top, bottom. Take the top one, lower the opacity. So now, now I'm going to go from the rounded rectangle to the rectangle tool. And I am going to make a rectangle. In fact, I'll make it a little bigger like that, right on top where the white is going to be, where it was spaced. And now if I take this one and I hold shift in this one, that means both are selected, I can go to Layer, Geometry, Subtract. So I'm going to bring this back up to your opacity. And you can see now that we have the space, just like we have with the one below. So I didn't get the color from the one below. So what I'll need to do, actually, I could do it this way. I could take this, duplicate it, and move it over. Now we have the colors to work with. It's just a second copy because I want to keep the first copy underneath. So if we take this one and here, we can drag the eyedropper to here. And by hitting the red here, we're clicking OK. And, and that's the perfect color. And now this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drag this to this color. 
and hitting the thing to select it. And now that we have the colors, that's, that extra copy we made can be deleted. So far, so good. Very simple, right? So let's go back and see where we're at. All right, now we need to put the dots. So if we lower the opacity of the top one, you can see where the dots are. And you know what I'm going to do now, right? Simple. Again, I am going to take this time the ellipse tool. And if I hold shift, I get a perfect circle. So I am going to see, I'm going to get a close up. And let's move it. The way I'm dragging around is I'm holding my space bar and dragging the hand shows up, which is perfect. And then you let go and you're back to what you were working with. So let's let's try and get this circle to be whoops, I'm holding shift still. There we go. I think that looks good. So we can make that circle white because that's what the other one was. And now don't forget that this red, the reason you see the circles is because the opacity is down. So I'm going back to that circle and I'm duplicating it. Control or Command J and I'm going to move it there. Now I'm going to hold my space bar and drag this way. And then with this, I'm going to do Control or Command J again and I'm going to move it right there, which I think is perfect. So now we're getting, we're getting really close here. Now, as, now let's get the opacity back up to normal. Now the dominoes part. I can actually, let's take the blue now and lower the opacity. You can look up on YouTube uh, what the fonts are. Now the fonts are not perfect because everyone plays around with their fonts. But I looked this up on YouTube. I just looked up Domino's Pizza font. And the closest thing they're talking about is Futura Condense. Now you don't have to use that. You can, you can, uh, I'm sorry, Futura Condense Bold, I believe. But you can do any font you want that's in close to this and you can reshape them. And I'll show you right now. I'm going to just type Domino's. Just like that. Of course, it's not right right now. So I'm going to go to Futura. And if you don't have it, you can go to Arial Black. Everybody has Arial Black. I think it was con oh, Futura Condensed Extra Bold is what it said. And of course, if you look at it, it really isn't exactly right. But we are going to play with this. So first let's get the size, close enough size. I have two, two apostrophe S's. I was wondering what's going on. Let's fix that and get rid of this. Now, now it makes more sense to me. And now I can even just drag if I want. Whoops. Not sure if that's right to do that, but I think it's close. And I think I'll also go up higher. And it is pretty close right there. Let's see if we want to move this a little bit. See how we can go a little bit out and down. And I'm okay with that. And I don't know. Let's see how this works. And if I grab those, some of those, I'm just going to move the S. And that's pretty good too. So we're really close. Now we're going to play with these letters just a little bit and see if, because uh, there is some differences, but I wanted to get it close and then I'm going to duplicate it again, control or command J, move it down to here and then type pizza. And I'm going to drag this a little bit that way. And with my arrow key, oops, I got to select it first. With my arrow key, move it down a little bit. And I think we're good. Go up just a tiny bit like that. And maybe a little out. So the pizza is almost right. It's pretty close. It's close enough. Now we can fix, we can get into real detail. So I'll show you what you do now. And you need to do this because if you don't have the font, you want to turn this to a vector graphic. So I want you to watch, let me move the domino above the pizza here. 
This is text. Grab the text and see my layout. I want you to see that it's one line that says text. I'm going to go to the top and say convert to curves. And now all of a sudden it's a group. And the group is every single letter separated. So for example, if I go to this S and get a close up, I could go to my node tool and say to myself, well, you know what? This S really needs to be a little bit more like that. I'm not doing a great job. I'm trying to go fast here so that you can get the idea. I should turn snapping off because it's affecting it. But I'm trying to just get this, let me get even closer, where this, there we go. I just grabbed that. So we're close. I mean, and then we can grab this and move it to here. I'm not going to do every letter, but I'm going to do something. So when I select this, I'm going to grab again the node tool. This time I'm just going to do this. And I can go to every one of these letters, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. So now that we have that, I am going to take each letter and turn the fill to white. This one. Now this one we did not convert to curves yet, so we have to convert it to curves. And we go like that again. I'm going to hold the curves and, and do white again. These are all on separate things, which there is really no need. So what you can do is you can take all of this, the one that says domino, I'm holding this and then I'm hitting shift. Since nothing is really intersecting on these, since nothing is intersecting, instead of having all these separate letters like this, you, you can leave them that way. But I prefer just taking the first and the last one and going to layer, geometry, add, and now it's still curves, but now because we did that, it's all one. So it's one line. I don't even need a group anymore. I'm just going to move this above the group and then delete the group. And I'm going to do the same here with pizza. I'm going to take the P, I, Z, Z, A. I'm holding shift. I'm going to go to layer, geometry, add. And now it's all one again, which it just cleans things up. If they were different colors, we couldn't do that. But since it's all the same color, we could. So now let's take the bottom one, move it out. And look at it, look at that. That's pretty good. Now, what, what did we do here? We forgot to bring the opacity back up. Let's back up. So these are pretty much the same. Wasn't that great? So now remember, let's group this all, the ones that we just created. Group. We don't need this bottom one anymore. But remember the one thing that was different here when we started? We were on a 45 degree angle. So I'm holding shift. And there you go. So this is Domino's Pizza. And that was your first logo. And I'd like to try to do, a, I'm not doing only these. I'll do my other tutorials in between. But if I get enough views on this and you like them and you subscribe, <laughs> that's a plug there. Please subscribe. It really does help me. And if you do subscribe, I will do more of these. We'll start off with easy logos and we'll go to harder ones. But right now, I think this is good for a beginner's tutorial. So thank you and have a great day. I hope you found these videos useful. If you did, please click like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me, you can buy me a cup of coffee at buymeacupofcoffee.com slash df. And I hope you'll check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.